For us, jewelry is adornment. It's something you put on in the morning that maybe goes with your outfit, but we're not so keyed in to jewelry and its symbolism. For the ancient Egyptians, it was something that had a protective value. This is a pendant of a necklace that belonged to a woman named Siddhartha Unit. We don't really know very much about her. She lived about 1880 BC. She's called the daughter of a king, so we know that she was a princess. The women of the royal family had a very important role in how the king's afterlife would be formulated. This piece actually doesn't have her name, but in the top in the center is the name of the pharaoh Senwasser II. She may have been the daughter of this king. We have these very beautiful falcons, which represent the god Horus. The king himself, when he's alive, is the god Horus. And Horus is sitting on these round signs which reflect the sun encircling the world. They're a symbol of eternity. They're a protective symbol hanging from the cobra. These two Ankh signs are symbols of life. At the bottom, we have this little kneeling figure, the symbol for the word million, holding the symbol years. Around the elbow is a tadpole, which is the numerical symbol of 100,000. It's a whole composition surrounding the name of the king with protection and eternal life. This one little piece has 372 separate inlays, and it's about 4,000 years old. They didn't have the kind of jeweler's tools that we have now. Everything inlaid on the front is repeated on the back in chase decoration. And you have to imagine that nobody saw this except the princess. This piece was a magical symbol that had to be complete. We're used to seeing these Egyptian kings. They're very remote. You see them in stone, and they're big and imposing. They're not really accessible to you as human beings. Of course, you wonder, what were these people like? There's little biographical data. So what we're left with is absolute shell of who she was, and then these things that she wore during her life. You're always grasping at these little things that somehow make them real people.